You know, many of you have done the minority teacher administrator recruitment plan, re retain, recruitment plans in past, 40, uh, and and now we are working with educator effectiveness to really um, yeah. Yeah. unify everything uh, that's going. Hopefully, give you some supports and uh, throughout the process. So here we go. Uh, the, the teacher administrator recruitment and retention plan. The first thing we want to talk a bit about is we do want to hit upon the why. So what's the purpose? Why are we having people do a, a plan? Why do we have that plan that focuses on diversity besides the fact that it's in the law? Well, here's a stat to think about. Uh, low income black male with one or more black teachers between third and fifth grade, just one, has a 39% less likelihood to drop out of high school and a 29% greater likelihood to pursue a four-year degree. There are multiple other statistics that we could share, but we want to make sure that why is important for that reasoning as we talk through uh, what that does for our students. What does it look like in Arkansas? Well, let's actually talk a little bit about the diversity of the Arkansas workforce and the students. So 40% of the students in Arkansas, this is of 2021 years data, uh, are not white. Yet only 10.2% of the teachers are black uh, uh, or Hispanic or Latino. We also have other um, Asian and, and Marshallese and, and demographics in there. But let's look through what that looks like in our schools. So, so 40% versus 10 to 15%. In our schools, there are 32% of our schools that do not have a non-white teacher at their school. When I put that data up, I thought, well, how many schools have no minority students? Because maybe that's the case. Well, I found out, well, you know, 59% have fewer than two non-white. So 0.2%, 0.2% of the schools in Arkansas do not have a, a student who's not white. Only 0.2%. Only what about districts? 27% of our districts have zero non-white teachers. And 51% have fewer than two in the entire district. Yet, how many districts have no there are 0% of our districts that don't have minority students in there. So a big chunk of our state uh, isn't diverse compared to their students. Why else is that important? And why do we wanna also talk about retention as opposed to just recruitment? Well, this is a report that was done by the Teach Arkansas, I mean the Teach Plus uh, group, where they actually did a survey of Arkansas educators of color, uh, December of 2020. And here are a couple of quotes from them that I just want you thinking about as we're considering retention as well as recruitment. So here's recruitment. Administrators say they can't find more teachers of color. Their answer is, but I don't see them having an actual plan to recruit with goals. That should change. If we haven't had it before, that's what this is about, to talk about how you can do those. And here's another one for retention. No district or school I've ever worked for felt like a place where teachers' cultural, racial, and ethnic identities have been affirmed. These are our teachers in Arkansas making these statements. Less than one third of those educators of color who were uh, spoken to a year and a half ago feel their identities and values are affirmed. That's why they're not staying too. There's more information on that here. So. I want that, we wanted to set that as the, the underlying. We know it's there, we've been doing it for a while, at least some have been doing things, but we want it to be more than just what the law says. Now we're gonna go into what the law says, but you've gotta remember that why or else all it becomes is an exercise in compliance. So here is what it requires. By August of 2022, which is coming up, you all, it says each, which means all public school districts and open enrollment charter schools mm -hmm. will have a plan. The three-year plan shall have the following items. They'll have a goal for diversity. They have to have specific data. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna have, you have to review them now annually and update them annually. And it has to be now posted on the website by August 1st. So make sure you're ready for that step. And you have, again, you've always had to have someone designated to coordinate the implementation, but now it added and review the plan. That is their role, that is a change. So what are the goals? Here's what's required of your goals. A goal for the recruitment of educator workforce that uh, at a minimum reflects the racial diversity 
a goal for retention of the workforce, and a goal for increasing the number of students. So instead of just addressing the increase in students, you have to have a goal now for increasing the number with an emphasis on students of minority races and ethnicities. Optional, additional goals. If you wanna have some more, you are free to add more based on the needs of your district, but you need to have at least those three. You also must include this data. There's been questions about what data we want in FAST. So here's what's in the law. You need data of the student body, the most recent. You need to have the list of teachers who are employed by the district over the last three years and administrators employed over the last three years and the residents of your community, the most current data, which would be the census data and moving forward. And we're gonna today show you how to get a lot of these things and where you can find them to, to put them in there as you review so that your focus can be on the plan and reviewing it and less on finding the data. So I just wanted to highlight real quick, the major changes from most to all districts now must do this, recruitment and retention. And I love this, at a minimum reflect the diversity of the student body. That's your baseline, that's where you get to. An annual review now is added and, and evaluative measures. And then that goal I already mentioned about student and specific steps. So these are the major changes th that are different from the original, the, the minority teacher administrator recruitment plan. So where do you get it? Here is the link, and we will again have this out to you um, to where you can actually get a copy of the, um, the plan. And this is a Google document. You click on that link and it will take you to a, a copy and you have to make a copy to be able to edit it yourself. And it's also on our website on the Equity Assistance Center website under the related files, uh, Teacher and Administrator Recruitment and Retention Plan, top right corner. That's where you can always go to find it. All right, so now we're gonna get into the template. Here's what the cover page is gonna have. It basically has the requirements of the law and it lists the data. I'm not gonna show you that picture because I don't think you need to see that for this part. I wanna show you the plan itself and how to fill it out. But that's what the cover page. It's similar to the previous one, except this one actually gives you links to where to locate some of the data we're gonna show you. So the retention template, you have to have a goal, a recruitment goal, recruiting a diverse representative educator workforce that meets the needs of all students. Notice diverse representative educator workforce. Retention, retaining that workforce. You may be able to have a good, numbers look good, but the, the, they keep switching, you keep losing them. Retention and recruitment with an emphasis on students of minority races and ethnicities. These are straight out of the law. You'll see the links in the bottom right corner or the references to the law on the page. So here's the template. First thing it's gonna show you is your recruitment goal. So let's start with that first one. You need to enter your goal and think about a SMART goal specific. Is it measurable? Is it something you can achieve in the next three years? Is it results oriented and is it time bound? We've got that three year mark. This is a three year plan as opposed to previous five years, 10 years. This is a three year plan. Now, most of you have some kind of goal that you've done in years past, but they may not match the goals that are required now. So if the goals you've had in past match the goals that you've required now, you may be extending the goal from previous year. Otherwise, the majority of you probably have a new goal under recruitment. And so you would just mark right here on your plan, this is a new goal, or I'm continuing the extension of a goal from the previous year. That helps you as you're designing. The next thing it's gonna ask is what are your action steps? There's any kind of goal we have to have action steps. These may be yearly, they may be more often than that, it depends on what you need. We have in the form a set for three action steps with the description, the person responsible and the target date. If you need to add more, just highlight a row and insert above or below. And it'll just add more for you, okay? Or you can always copy and create an entire new um, copy of that page, but the easiest is generally just to add an action step row. 
There is no requirement for how many action steps. You need to have as many as you need to accomplish your goal, but not so many that you get overwhelmed and you can't follow up and make sure they happen. Okay, the next thing it's gonna ask for is your evaluative met methods. What evidence will be used to determine uh, the, the goals met? So if these are new goals that you have never met before, uh, your baseline data should be what you are now and your evidence should be what this data will show when we've met our goal and how we're gonna get there. We know how to do evaluations, lay it out in there and make it clear. This is what we're going to do. The next is it wants to review. If you are doing all new goals this year, you won't have anything to put in the review progress. If you're carrying over goals from the previous minority teacher administrator recruitment plan because they match what the new goals are required to be and you still wanna work in them, go ahead and review where you've been at. But it's not this year really, but the year after this, that it's, you, everybody has to have something in that review at that point. So, so many of you, in fact, most of you probably will have nothing in this section this coming summer. But if you have something that you're carrying over, please put some progress. I think it'll help you in your planning if you review where, what you've done up to this point. So again, new goals, then you want to go ahead and complete the new goals. You'll complete it next year. If you're carrying current goals from the previous year or this year, then you want to go ahead and fill it out this summer because you're, you're continuing the same goals. Then you have the submission. This looks just like the previous ones look. Make sure you print this out, you put in your information and don't forget your signatures. So uh, this is the part that you most likely will have to print out unless you have a way for them to sign online locally with your own technology. You will probably have to print this out and rescan it back in. Everything else, you could turn straight into PDF and, and post it directly to the website. All right. And then at the end of that, there's some appendices that give you a template for the required data and it gives you some recommended resources that could help you if you're wanting to add additional links. Um, so this is the section we've talked about that has to do with the plan itself. And now Charlie is gonna go into finding the data and where you can pull this out. All righty, so I'm going to do a little tour of LEA Insights. Um, if you've accessed the plan via the link, you will see that that first page that Lance talked about really has a lot of these links embedded. Um, we did that intentionally. So like he, like Lance said, we can, um, you can have access to the data and you don't have to spend a lot of time gathering and your Cognos reports and all of those things. So this should be, this is a very helpful tool. Um, this is the website address. If you just type LEA Insights into Google, It'll also be one of the first search engines that comes up um, and you'll get a screen like this. Every superintendent has access and can grant access to others in your district for this particular site based on your school. What we're looking at right now is overall state level data. Um, over here is where you would find your school and see your school specific data um, related to your district. Um, so the first thing that the plan requires is the most recent school year's data on your student body, the ethnic composition of your student body. Um, so if you see in this LEA Insights, if you just click right over here on this enrollment tab, it takes you right to a screen that how it shows enrollment, overall enrollment, enrollment by grade, enrollment by race, and then even enrollment by race percentages. So it'll give you all the data you need right there. Um, you can also toggle between um, actual data and the charts if the charts aren't giving you what you need. Um, and you can even go up here to the top and pop that into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I have one, I've done it right here, downloaded and it shows you all of that breakdown um, by race and ethnicity percentages of your student population. So these are the things you can just download and attach to your plan. You don't have to do a whole lot of digging and creating charts and creating things. 
Um, we did provide a template for the data in, in the template. There's actually a chart where you can insert this data, but you also have the opportunity just to download it from LEA Insights or wherever you would like to download this and just attach it to your plan. Um, another, the other the second one that you need to find are the teachers employed and that's the previous three years. So this is where this human capital tab will come in handy. Um, if you click that and then go to overview. Well, I have some screenshots in here too. Sometimes it takes a little bit to download that. Uh, but go to that human capital overview, and then there's a, a tab for certified teaching staff. Um, and it will show you those race breakdowns again as well. And this is what that looks like. And you can toggle again, um, and then you can download those spreadsheets as well. Um, for administrator data, race and ethnic breakdown for your administrator staff. Um, you can either go into LEA Insights and you pull up a screen that looks like this. It's that same screen, click on staff details. Um, I have this one filtered for high school assistant principal job code. And you can see this is where your staff actual, their names would appear, their job codes, um, and then their race is there. Um, there's also a Cognos report in eFinance that will provide this data for you as well. Just go to eFinance, personnel, job assignment and administrator accounts and you get a screen like this that you can just download and attach. Um, so for, and then also the plan requires the, the residents of your district, the ethnic breakdown of, of the residents. So I've provided a link here. It's also in your template. If you click that link, it takes you right to the census webpage. You would type in your city or town right here, and then you can just filter by race and there's that data for you that you would need to have. So that's what is required to, and it has to be included with your plan. You have to actually provide that when your plan is submitted. Um, and all plans should reflect data analysis. We'd like to, to see that you have actually looked at that um, and develop some goals based on that data. Uh, we have some other data points that would love, they're optional, they're not required by law, but definitely if we're gonna make that robust plan, we would love to see you um, take some of these points into consideration. Um, if you track your applicant pool and who you're hiring each year, um, that is very valuable data. Attrition data, there is a link right here to LEA Insights that will show you right where to find that attrition data for your district. Um, these next three are, you know, like Lance said, there's the goal specifically around recruiting students into the education profession. So you might be interested in what, what percentage of your students um, racial breakdown of your students enrolled in the DCTE pre-educator program of study. Um, are your educator rising members? So that student organization that encourages students to become teachers. Um, maybe you wanna see your breakdown um, racially of your student enrollment in those or involvement. Um, who is a, it has received the certified teaching assistant credential? That's what uh, you can earn. Students have the ability to earn through that pre-educator program of study. Um, this link takes you to a listing of CTE coordinators. Your district would either have one or the co-op, um, but that, you know, is valuable. That person should be able to point you in the right direction to get those data points. And then, of course, that student success plan that's required. Um, you might want to be able to look at those and, and target students that have indicated that education is a career choice that they're interested in. Um, there's a lot more links here to LEA Insights, things that you can find in there. You can, these are all related to your teacher quality. Um, so percent of novice teachers, years of experience, teachers with master's degrees or higher, teachers with lead and master designations, um, national board teachers. You can see some, some things about who are your exception data that you can view, like which teachers in your building are on licensure exceptions. Um, and then, of course, looking at that growth and achievement data. Here's just a screen grab of the public educators tab, just to let you know what that would look like if you pull up that tab in LEA Insights. I've blocked out the names here, but you can see not only the race of your teachers, their years of experience, degrees, if they're nationally board certified, what they're licensed in, if they hold a license, 
Um, and then you also can see if they are leader master designated here on this screen. So that screen provides a lot of valuable information um, for you to, to check out. And now I'm gonna pass it to Carly so she can talk to you about some possible funding sources. We are trying to make this as streamlined as we can. So this is not a hard process, but an easy process. Just going to mention some of the possibilities uh, you can really uh, collaborate and use this as part of your ESA plan and vice versa. You can use uh, the ESA funding, the Enhanced Student Achievement Categorical Funds for additional teachers, for enhancement of teacher salaries. And again, we gave you examples on the side. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because we do not have a lot of time left. Also, you may want to look at your Title II Part A because you can utilize this money for recruiting and preparing. It's that teacher quality. It's not only teacher, but school leaders. This may give uh, you opportunities to do things that you haven't done in the past. And a lot of times we want you to really think about this new residency program and lead and master teachers and them taking on extra roles and responsibilities. We've also put in this slide about the lead professional and the master and the pathways that they can become designated. Again, we're trying to make this simple because a lot of you grow your own, maybe a model that you put into your plan, the Arkansas residency program or pathway may be what you need. You would need a leader master teacher and uh, utilizing those funds to pay those lead master teachers to take on those roles and responsibilities of mentoring and uh, really taking that residence under their wing and making them a great teacher. Again, we know that teachers leave, leave the profession because of support. This is giving you a way to really put in some um, strategies, resources to keep those teachers there. We just want you to see, these are just screenshots from the ESA portion in Insights. If you're wanting to look at your staffing, you can take this and you can look at your staffing. You can look at it by ages of experience. You can also get the breakdown and it's going to show you your staff compared to your student demographics. And this answers a lot of those questions within the law that you need to have for your recruitment and retention plan. Also, it lets you look among your buildings to see the attrition rate. Where are you having your high turnover? This is all, again, in Insight. Charlie showed you where to get the data, and it clicks right to it. Here's some more data that you can utilize as you are building your plan. I know we are going fast and furious, but here are some dates you need to remember. Um, you've got your ESA due. July 1, and if you want to make sure and uh, utilize those funding, you're going to be building your recruitment and retention plan. So really look at these dates because that's where they come into play. We do have, I think Tracy Webb is on here, and I think Jane Green is on here. Those, Jane Green is your title person that all, all about the finance. And then, of course, Tracy Webb is on here. She's all about ESA. We are going to try to be here for you and answer your questions. Thank you very much. So as we go into that last little bit, breaking the timeline here, I just saw a question. I want to make it clear. Uh, this is posted on your websites by August 1. It is no longer a, a submission to us in relation to that. So by August 1, you will have posted the web, this stuff on your website and the Public School Accountability Office will review and, and uh, list those who have them up with at least their goals, with their goals up there. And then in the fall, the Equity Assistance Center and the Educator, Educator Effectiveness and Licensure will have teams that will review one third of the plans. Every year, we'll make sure we do a third of the plans at least so that within three years, everyone 
will have been reviewed. In addition, we have a risk assessment tool we're working on that will include some of these items, things such as uh, diversity gaps, uh, the plan is posted on time, uh, license your exceptions waivers. I'm going to pause for a minute. Make sure that you've put things in correctly for licensure waivers and exceptions, because that's one of the pieces that may be utilized to determine a risk assessment, meaning that if you aren't in the third we initially were going to review, you may be included now in those. Um, so check and make sure those are up to date um, and so that you don't get caught in this risk assessment uh, when it's not necessary because of, of an, an error, an unexpected error in the data. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll have the rest of the district so that everyone will have a review within three years. Um, of course, our office, uh, Educator Effectiveness, if there are any of you who are working on it and want our feedback prior to, we're here to help you out. You, you don't have to wait for that. Let us, let us help you through the process. But what happens if you have questions? Well, here are some great places to go. Um, if you have questions about the LEA Insights Technical Assistance, there's the number for, for informational technology. ESEA funding, there's the number for fiscal services. Title II funding, Public School Accountability, looks like Jane has put her email in the um, chat. We appreciate that to put on there. Uh, and then other questions that relate to the plan itself, uh, tools, resources you can use to increase. Uh, we'll have those there for you would ask that you at this moment, you'll see a link that we put in the website, in the chat, or you can just type that one that's there directly in using the uh, cap, capitalization matters. Please give us feedback. This is a, an anonymous feedback. However, there's an option in there for you to say, I'd like to have additional training on things. In that case, you'll need to let us know who you are. or we have no idea out of the 240 people who asked for more training on things. Um, but please take a moment. It, it's not, there are not many questions uh, in that survey. We appreciate all your time uh, and what we've done. This, like we said, let me kind of confirm a few items. We are going to post this presentation up. I'm going to say by the end of the week, although I think we'll get it up a lot quicker than that, uh, onto the Equity Assistance Center website. Um, so check back either of those emails if you don't see it by then. Um, we're also going to put a video of this presentation up uh, in close to the same time frame so that you have that. And then we're here to answer questions. 